Hey everybody, this is John. Today I'm going to show you how I make rifle ammunition. So first off, you got a pile of clean brass. Now this brass has been fired before, so um, one thing with the brass is that uh, it's swollen. It fits the chamber of the rifle. So if you took a case gauge like this and you were to put it in, you'd see that it no longer fits the gauge because it needs to be shrunk in to be the normal factory original size. So you have to resize it. The primer is used. So what you have to do is remove the primer and put a new one in. Sometimes you have military cases and there is a crimp around this hole. You may need to cut that crimp off or swage it off. Uh, and one other thing is the length of this thing. It's too long and it's swollen. So we need to resize it remove the primer, put a new primer in, and we need to maybe remove the crimp uh, from the primer pocket, and we need to trim it to length. I own three different trimming tools. Uh, the one that I currently use is a Dillon RT1200. It's a trimmer for a progressive type machine, but the ones I've used in the past, one is called a Lee Zip Trim. Um, this is a chuck you put in here. You can just put the brass in here and that then you, you chuck the brass in here and then there's a ball with a cutter on it there's a, a thing here so this sets the proper length of the brass when you put it in and then there's a, a sharp um, cutter on the end here so all you'd have to do is stick this in like that and pull on the cord and there's videos on uh, line how to do Lee zip trim how to make it work and each piece of brass gets handled and you do each one to the proper length and then you can measure it to make sure that the brass is trimmed properly. Another product that is better at trimming brass is the Possum Hollow some kind of trimmer. This is a two piece I think. One part uh, is you buy so you can chuck it in a drill. And The way this works is you put this in like a drill or a drill press and you just shove each piece of brass in. So if you had a drill press it could come down on each one and inside here there's a shoulder in here and that will automatically set the proper length of each piece of brass. So this is a better product than the Lee Zip Trim. I use this for quite some time. After you resize this thing, the primer pocket is now uh, open. There is a tool that I've used in the past. This is I think by Hornady. And you can actually stick it in the hole here and twist it by hand. That would cut any crimp off the hole. Uh, what I used to do was I would just take this off, I would chuck that in a drill press and then let it run freely and then just take each piece of brass and individually put the brass in here and cut the swage off. There, Dylan also sells a product, um, a swager tool that each piece of brass you take in and you manually put in the hole uh, or put in the machine and you pull the lever and um, I think it's called Dylan Super Swage and that's another way that you can get the crimp off the primer pocket. Another thing that you can do is use a tool like this and when you get that primer knocked out of that hole sometimes you'll see there's dirt in there. You can just take, this is for a large primer and this is for a small primer, you can just take this, stick it in the hole, give it a turn or two and that will get the dirt out of the hole. I used to do that but I don't anymore because I don't really find that it makes a difference. Another thing you could do is just take a screwdriver bit like that and maybe file down the end a little bit so it fits in the hole and you can use this instead of that other tool that you'd buy. And the last tool that, you, that could be useful, if this is made by Lee, it looks like this. Um, it is a chamfer deburring tool. So when you trim your brass, this edge here, you may want to put a bevel on it. Um, what you can do is a tool like this then would go in here and you would turn it by hand and that would cut a bevel in here to help you to accept the bullet. And then you can flip the thing around the other way and then you twist it like that and that'll help take off any burrs that are on the outside of the brass where you actually, after you cut it. I've taken a, something like that and I put it in a uh, 11 16 socket and I just put something like that on the socket and I chuck that in the drill press. And then I can take this out and flip it one way and then let this run in the press and just take each piece of brass and shove it in. Then I can take this out, flip it around, put it back in again, and just run it through the press um, in the other direction to do both those functions. 
Having said all that, what I currently use is a Dillon RT1200 uh, trimmer. Uh, so inside here, this will has a resizer in it that helps resize the brass. Uh, in the in the station here, I actually use three stations. The first station is just to resize the brass. I don't use a decapping pin to remove the primer. Then I put another 223 um, resizer with a decapping pin to give it a second resize. Then when it goes inside the trimmer, there's a third resizer that also trims. There's a hose here. This is for a shop vac that I have mounted under the bench. So before you run your brass through your resizer, one of the first things you have to do is lubricate it. Otherwise, it'll get stuck in the die. So there's different ways uh, you can lubricate brass. You can buy something like Hornady One Shot Spray. Um, you can use Dillon's Case Lubricant. Dillon, uh, this is essentially just made of uh, alcohol and uh, liquid lanolin. So you can actually make this stuff yourself if you want to save some money. You can go to your hippie section of your grocery store and find liquid lanolin. This stuff is like honey. Stick it in your microwave for a little bit to warm it up. And then you can mix it with like 90, 95 or 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol and you would mix this stuff one ounce of this stuff for eight ounces of alcohol and that essentially gives you this stuff for rifle brass I prefer to use something called imperial sizing dye wax to apply this stuff what I do is I just with my gloves on take a little bit put it in your fingers and this is sort of like Vaseline and you just put some on your hands and you take the brass out Okay, so now we're ready to trim this stuff and resize it. Stick it in the gauge again. It seats pretty much flush on the top and on the back side. And that means it's good. If we measure this thing in the gauge here, it's 1.748. So that's pretty good. I'm going to trim it at that. Now we just take a couple pieces and just double check, make sure it's all good. Wipe the grease off, throw it in the gauge, it's flush. Flush up on this end, flush on this end. We're all good. So um, now would be a time when we're at 1.749. That's good. Um, now would be a good time that you could uh, take this primer pocket and it looks like there could be some crimp on some of these. Uh, you could cut that crimp off. You could even clean out that flash hole if you wanted to with that, that a screwdriver type thing. And uh, you could also deburr and chamfer that, uh, that uh, case mouth you wanted to. Uh, that would help the bullets go in a bit easier. But my trimmer is pretty good, that RT1200. So I'm not even going to do that. And my, uh, I'm going to load this on a Dillon 1050, and that has a swager station in the press. And um, so that will take care of that military crimp for me. Because this brass is now prepped, I don't need the lube on it anymore. What I've found, if I load with Varget powder, it's a little small stick powder, almost like little short pencil leads. If the brass is um, greasy inside on the neck, sometimes the Varget powder can bridge and what happens is all the powder doesn't drop in the case. When you pull the case down out of the powder drop die, powder goes all over the deck of the press and screws everything up. So what I typically do is now I clean the grease or the lube off the brass. So when I load the ammo on the press, it's completely dry. So I'm just going to... Uh 
throw the glass in here and I'll probably turn this machine on for maybe 10 or 15 minutes and that'll be enough to clean that grease up. So I got this machine then to uh, sift the uh, media from the brass. First hole, we get a brass. There's no uh, resizer and deprime decapper die here because I've got all that done already. So I don't need any lube on this case. First station right here is uh, a swager. What it does is it swages the, pocket, the primer pocket hole so it cuts up any military crimp. The, there's a rod inside here. It will also expand this mouth on the brass a bit to help it accept a bullet. Now this brass here is going to get primed. This guy here coming behind it is going to do what the one before it already done. So that's, this guy is now primed. It's going to get a powder drop. Now it's going to get a bullet. You normally place a bullet here by hand, but I've got a bullet feeder. Now this die here is going to seat the bullet to the proper depth. And then this die is going to crimp the round. And so that's your finished round. And all these other guys are in line to get their turn. Now you want to check the round in your case gauge to make sure it's flush and that uh, everything fits nice. And you want to check the overall length. The maximum spec is usually around 2.26 inches. But that typically means the, uh, the, bra the, the round is going to be very tight in the magazine. It's almost too long for the magazine. So I load this one at about 2.246 inches. And uh, we're good to go. So now we keep turning them out. Next, because I was not able to do a visual check on each round to see if a powder drop was successful, um, I need to make sure that I don't have any squibs. So what I do, because all the brass is pretty much the same head stamp, um, I'll take one round and I'll put it on the scale and I'll zero the scale. And then I'll just take all the other rounds and put them on the scale. And if there was a round that only had a half a powder drop or something, I would see maybe it being off by like 10 grains or maybe because there's 25 grains of powder. I would see that you'd be off by quite a bit and therefore that one would be a squib. And after you get them all checked and there's no squibs, you need to make sure that each one will case gauge. Well, that's it, guys. That's how I load 223 ammo. Thanks for watching.